Can you ever really know someone, or do you just have to risk trusting people? This question was likely in the minds of those in the story, most of whom probably lean towards the latter. Let's start with today's story: the case of Lady Um. It was February 13th, 2005. A fire broke out at a hospital in Gangnam in Seoul, but no one was injured or killed. However, the smell of gasoline made police think that someone had intentionally set the blaze, prompting them to check CCTV footage. Sure enough, it showed a suspicious woman, who turned out to be a 29-year-old lady surnamed Om. Police arrested her and began their investigation. After hearing that she had a young son, detectives made the difficult decision of looking into the case further without detention. Then one day, Um's younger brother dropped by a police station. Detective, bad things keep happening to my older sister. If my brother-in-law died, then my second brother-in-law died, and people that my sister knows keep on getting hurt or dying. Police immediately started looking into his claims and into his sister. They found a few things that were suspicious. As soon as Lady Um graduated high school, she ran away from home and worked as an insurance sales representative. She met a guy, and they hit it off. They moved in together, and in no time, registered their marriage. Her husband lacked mental capacity, but that didn't matter because they were in love. Soon they had a daughter, and lived as what seemed to be a happy family. That was short-lived, as her daughter fell off a desk and died when she was just three years old. Their tragedy didn't end there. Lady Um's husband fainted, and had a concussion. His condition wasn't too serious, but it happened again soon after he fainted and had another concussion. Why did he faint twice and have concussions both times? He was asked why he thought he was so sick. I took medicine because I ached all over, but I don't remember anything. Since he didn't remember, the exact cause of his ailment couldn't be determined. Lady Um devoted herself to taking care of her husband, nursing him until he got better. When it seemed like he was making a full recovery, he woke up one day. And couldn't see. The couple was startled, and they immediately went to the hospital to see what was wrong. Despite these series of unfortunate events, Lady Um stuck by her husband's side and showed what appeared to be her everlasting love for him. Then, on March 25, 2002, her husband passed away. Cellulitis, a bacterial skin infection, was determined as the cause of his death. For days, Lady Um mourned her husband and fell into deep sadness. But that grieving didn't last long, as she started seeing another man just one month after. Their courtship was also very speedy, with Um and her new man registering their marriage in no time. Not too much time passed before her second husband, surnamed Im, also fainted. Um, like she did with her first husband, sat by Im's hospital bed until he was discharged. A gesture he was very moved by. A month later, after his condition had improved, he woke up in agony. They quickly went to the emergency room, but it was too late. He had already lost his sight, and two months later, he died, with cause of death also being cellulitis. The two men had lost their sight and died of the same cause. Suspicions arose over Lady Um once again, but she continued to show sincerity to the point of holding a wedding ritual to apparently show how committed she was to her second husband. This made it difficult to suspect any malicious intent. But did she really not have anything to do with these unfortunate events and deaths? Police had this question in their minds day after day. Investigators decided to pay Lady Um a visit, but her older brother greeted them at the door instead, and something was very wrong with him. 
Just like Lady Om's two husbands, her older brother had gone blind. Police also found her mother laying down in the house. She had lost her sight too. This all turned out to be the evil work of Lady Um. Why did she hurt her two husbands, her older brother, and even her mother? Simple, for insurance. She committed all these evil acts to receive insurance money. Now let's take a closer look at what exactly happened. On the day Lady Um's first husband fainted, she gave him antidepressants. She mixed the antidepressants, which could lead to amnesia and a comatose state if excessively taken, in a drink. When he was high on medicine, she pushed him. In May 2005, she received her first insurance money, 340,000 won. Apparently thinking this amount was too little, she planned her next move. She fed him antidepressants again and poked his right eye with a safety pin. Lady Um even heated oil on a stove and poured it on her husband's face. In this way, she committed inhumane and heinous crimes. That was her plan all along. Remember we told you that she used to work as an insurance sales representative. She used the information she gained at the time to plan and carry out her crimes. Lady Um knew she could receive the most insurance money for deaths, followed by loss of eyesight and fires, meaning every detail of her crimes were planned. It was later found that she even stabbed her first husband three times with a knife after he lost his sight, saying he had harmed himself as he was being treated for mental illness. Let's move on to her second husband, surnamed Im. When they tied the knot, Om hid the fact that she had been previously married. She also made it seem like she came from a good family and had a good upbringing. That's how they started living together, but only for about six months when the situation turned upside down. She then, like she had planned, gave him medicine and pushed him, giving a concussion and a tailbone fracture. Um registered their marriage while her new man was in the hospital and used a straight pin to blind him after he was discharged. She made him suffer a couple of burns and made him die of cellulitis. And we cannot forget how she devoted herself to nurse her husband when he was ill as well as the wedding ritual she held after his death. It was all an act to escape blame and suspicion. What was shocking was the fact that people who she had blood ties with were included in those she targeted. She mixed medicine with pomegranate and plum tea and fed it to her mother and older brother. She blinded her mother by poking her eyes with a syringe and poured hydrochloric acid on both of her old brother's eyes to blind him. That's not all. She fed her older brother medicine once again, as well as gave it to her younger brother and set them ablaze. Fortunately, both survived as the older brother wasn't too knocked out by the medicine and woke his younger brother up. But they both suffered burns, meaning Lady Um received 200 million won in insurance money. After setting her brothers on fire, she visited a maid who used to work for her. She told her that her house had been burned down, had nowhere to go, and asked for a place to stay for a few days. Feeling bad for her, the maid welcomed Lady Um into her home. Weeks went by, and even after a month, she had no intention of leaving. The maid couldn't be patient any longer and asked Um to leave. Angered by the request, Lady Um set the maid's house on fire, resulting in the death of the maid's husband and leaving lifelong burns on her children. Um couldn't stand idly by and watch the maid and her children get treated at the hospital, and so she set the hospital on fire. This incident helped police with their investigation. Then how much insurance money did Lady Um collect in total? As of 2005, she received close to 1 billion won in insurance money. 
It was later revealed that she squandered away the significant amount of money on luxury and entertainment expenses. In the end, she pleaded guilty to all her crimes, and the court handed down a sentence of life in prison. Lady Um, a strange case of a woman psychopath. If it wasn't for her last arson case, she could have put many other lives in danger. Megan's Case Files will continue next episode. Thanks for watching.